Welcome you all to today's webinar titled Instructional Design Tools to Create, Collaborate, and Inspire. So this session is being recorded and the archive will be posted to our on-demand recordings page. My name is Claire Alkire and I am a program coordinator here at UCI Division of Continuing Education. Here's a brief outline of what we're going to cover in this webinar session. First, I'll start off with a quick overview of Zoom features so you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. Next, I'll be giving you some information about our e-learning instructional design certificate program, which is a fully online program. I will cover the requirements, fees, and details uh, regarding upcoming courses for our winter quarter, which begins January 3rd. I will then turn it over to our guest presenter, Nick Flora. At the end of his presentation today, we'll have a brief Q&A session. And finally, I will leave you with my contact information so you can send over any additional questions we didn't address. Uh, if you end up having any technical difficulties during the webinar today, please send a chat message over to John and he can help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for Nick regarding the content of this presentation, please submit it in the chat panel and we will address it at the end if we have time. Um, be sure to send your questions to everyone or all panelists and attendees. Um, let's take a moment to uh, warm up the chat panel a little bit. So for everyone logged in, if you could uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, let us know where you're logging in from today, uh, your job title or company, and what industry you work in. That would be great. I'll give it a couple minutes for you to go ahead and type. Hello, and Carlina, hello. Thanks, Nick. Awesome. Great, you got me, Montana, Florida, awesome. Good to see all of you. Thanks so much. Okay, definitely keep sending that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward, um, but I will keep looking at your responses and we're glad to have all of you here today. Um, so here's a brief overview of the e-learning instructional design certificate program. Our program provides the knowledge and skills needed to develop and deliver training online. Taught by industry experts, the program will help you become proficient in all aspects of e-learning, including the design and development of interactive lessons, project management, evaluation and assessment, and more. As a student in the program, you will get hands-on experience with our learning management system, take part in online learning community forums, receive individualized feedback from instructors, and have the opportunity to network and learn from others in the field. Our program is designed for a number of audiences. Individuals who are completely new to e-learning instructional design, training managers and coordinators, HR professionals, and individuals who have taken on a training role within their department. With the strategic switch to remote and online delivery, companies have prioritized e-learning as they recognize the value of training online. In order to be successful in our certificate program, students should be comfortable navigating software applications and learning management systems. The certificate program is composed of six required courses, which add up to 15 units total. To be eligible for this certificate, students must complete all six courses with a letter grade of C or better, as well as completing the Declaration of Candidacy and Request for Certificate form. Since there's a small candidacy fee, I would advise students take um, a few courses in our program before they declare uh, the candidacy, just to make sure that they want to complete the full certificate program. So as I mentioned before, our certificate program consists of six online courses. The required courses are listed below, principles of e-learning instructional design, exploring e-learning development tools, designing and developing interactive e-learning courses, project management for e-learning professionals, e-learning evaluation and assessment, and the e-learning instructional design practicum. Each course is 2.5 units and will run for eight weeks online. We highly recommend that students start off with the principles class and follow the sequence of courses as shown on this slide. The curriculum has been developed to flow from one course to the next, so taking the courses in this sequence is beneficial. 
please note that there is a prerequisite for the practicum course. You must successfully complete all other required courses before enrolling in the practicum. At the bottom of this slide, I have also listed a supplemental course that may be of interest to you. Creating your uh, online e-learning portfolio is not part of the certificate program requirements, but it is a wonderful opportunity to help you advance your career or become better situated in your job search. It is open enrollment, so anyone may enroll even if you're not enrolled in our program. This is a five week long instructor led course that takes participants through the entire process of creating an online portfolio from defining the target audience and picking a tool through creating a polished website to share samples. So our program offers an alternative digital credential or ADC within two courses in our certificate program. Students will have the opportunity to earn an ADC through successful completion of a qualifying assignment within both the designing and developing interactive e-learning course and the e-learning evaluation and assessment course. Also referred to as a digital badge, an ADC is a virtual record of specific skills and competencies acquired and provides a verifiable way to share your educational achievement with others via channels like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Badges help demonstrate your commitment to professional development and help you stand out in links if you're interested in learning more about ADCs in general, the specific ones in interactive e-learning storyboarding and in level three evaluation behavior analysis proposal. And I've included the actual badge images on this slide. So in the upcoming winter 2023 quarter, we are offering principles of e-learning instructional design, exploring e-learning development tools, project management for e-learning professionals, the e-learning instructional design practicum, and creating your online uh, e-learning portfolio. Each course is listed with its start and end date, as well as the online course fee. Enrollment is currently open, and students may enroll either online or over the phone by calling our student services office at the number provided. We encourage students to enroll early as classes fill up quickly. Um, and then regarding the creating your online e-learning portfolio, just another bit about that. Um, this is a non-credit CEU course, um, so you wouldn't receive a letter grade, but you would receive um, you know, personalized guidance and feedback from instructors and peers to um, improve your portfolio. Another thing to note is that um, participants should already have a minimum of two e-learning samples completed prior to enrolling since the creation of e-learning samples is outside the scope of this specific course. Um, so registration for this course and the others this winter are currently open and early enrollment is definitely recommended. Each required course in our program costs $680. So you're looking at a total of 4,205 in course fees for the six online classes. You don't have to pay the entire total upfront. You would simply pay for each course individually at the time of enrollment. There is also that $125 certificate candidacy fee for the program. So in the end, you're looking at just about 4,330 for the entire certificate program. Um, definitely note that this does not include textbooks, which some courses may require. Textbook information is posted on the enrollment page, so you'll know if course materials are required before you enroll in a class. Prior to enrollment in the practicum, students must purchase or otherwise have access to um, and gain working knowledge of an authoring tools such as Articulate 360, Adobe Captivate, or others. Um, therefore, software may be an additional expense as well. I'd also like to specifically point out um, information about a special discount we offer for the program. We offer 10% off course fees to members of ATD San Diego, Orange County, um, Los Angeles, uh, sorry, San Diego, Orange County, and Los Angeles chapters. If you are a member of these chapters, please visit the chapter website for more information. This slide contains information about the articulation agreement we have in place with the University of San Diego to provide you a next step on your educational pathway. After completion of our e-learning instructional design certificate program with a grade of B or better in each course, USD has agreed to accept our coursework as six units toward their fully online master's in learning design and technology. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please visit the website linked on this slide. 
And then here is a screenshot of our online course schedule, which has the most up-to-date information looking ahead for winter 2023. You can enroll in any of the available courses by clicking the green online button. To be scheduled indicates when particular courses are scheduled to be offered, but enrollment just hasn't opened yet. As you can see, we don't offer every course every quarter, so you would want to plan ahead. Um, so at this time, it is my pleasure to go ahead and hand it over to our guest presenter, Nick Floro. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks, Claire. Um, I'm going to go over here and just set this up. Um, so I'm uh, out in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, out in the East Coast, and I'm excited to be here. I'm going to bring up our keynote. And we're going to be talking about about 50 different tools. Um, it's going to be rapid fire and we're going to have fun. <laughs> uh, your job is to write down one or two that excites you. And there'll probably be more than that. Um, as we go through the presentation, there'll be a couple of times where I remind you um, that you can download a link um, that will give you access to all the different tools that you can link out to them and learn more about them. Some are free. Some of them are a little bit of money. Um, there's also a copy of the presentation that you can play with. Um, i am um, been around for about 30 years now in the learning uh, space, and I operate as a learning architect. I've got a small team that works with me to develop content and solutions. Um, my One of the things I love is playing with the technology. So I love um, playing with gadgets and figuring out how to use these different tools. Um, but mainly what I do is help stakeholders understand the technology and figure out how to best put the pieces together um, to help solve their problems. So my goal today um, is to give you that power um, by learning about all these different tools, how you can use them to help define a project that's coming up, how you might communicate to a stakeholder, how you might manage different tasks that are coming in, uh, a little bit about thinking about different types of experiences, so how you might start to create and um, imagine the future. Um, as well as collaborate with your stakeholder and your team that you're working with. And then there's some fun tools that'll help you um, build and design some different elements. So one of the fun things is about what we do today is that we use lots of different tools. We may not realize it, like, but we use a browser every day. We use email every day. We're in a Zoom meeting today. Um, these are some of the tools that I use and why I am hope to inspire you by looking at some of these different applications that are out there. Um, this is the magic link, um, and I'll add this to our chat window, but basically at any point uh, during the session or after the session, this will open up a browser window, and you'll see a PowerPoint uh, file PDF, as well as all the different resources that we go through. So um, let's jump in. So the first area that we're going to talk about um, is tools to define a project that you might be working on. And I just got back from Nevada. Uh, where I was at DevLearn last week. And one of the fun things is that they've got a dozen different presentations that are happening. So if you're in education or a school or within a corporation, you may be moving from room to room. And one of the cool applications that you can take advantage of is free. Uh, it works on your iOS or Android device. It's called Microsoft Lens. And so you can download it for free. And what it allows you to do is basically point your uh, camera at a piece of paper and it, you'll notice that it's on a desk. And when you click the snap button, it will automatically straighten it out. And the beauty of that is that you can then save it and share it. Um, so if you're meeting with someone and they're around the world, um, you can grab a picture that's on your desk or a sketch or a document or a brand guide and quickly share it with them without fussing around with your device or lights and so on. So this will automatically do that for you. What's also nice is if you're taking a picture of your computer or if you're at a presentation at an event, um, here you see an example of a board and how it automatically straightens it out. So this is me playing on my desk and I've got three business cards there. And you'll notice that when I um, click, it will automatically grab that and straighten it out for us. Um, so it's really easy to take advantage of it. And then once you have it, you can save it to your photo library or if you're a Microsoft Office account holder, you can also share it there. The next app is also free. It's called Google App uh, for iOS and in Android, it's built in. And what's great about this app is that we've all used Google to search and find different things. Um, but while I was at uh, DevLearn, um, I was excited to think about, wow, my shoes look kind of worn out. Uh, if I take a picture of that, so I can use the Google app to snap a photo 
and it will automatically search the web. Um, these are a couple years old, so it'll find newer models. So it'll tell me the model and the current pricing of that shoe. Um, if I was back at home and I've got my favorite coffee cup, Tigger, um, I can also do the same thing. I can find out if that cup is still available or someone might be selling an older one on eBay. Um, so the advantage of this is rather than saying, I'm looking for a Tigger cup and you might get a, a thousand different results, you can use your camera on your phone to identify and bring that data up to help um, find something. And that can be used with just about anything. And Lauren's sharing too, um, Google Lens. Um, okay. So you guys should be seeing the screen big. Like you can make your Zoom window bigger to see it full screen. If you guys have a problem, just chat. Uh, Claire, you had mentioned that. So let me know if that's a problem and I can switch to share screen. Uh, so in this area, some tools to create. One of my favorite tools is coolers.co. And what this one does is it helps you to find a color palette. Um, so what happens is if you're trying to figure out what colors can I use on a project, you might have one or two colors from a brand guide. And what this tool does is it actually works through the website. You can select one of the colors and lock it in. So I just locked in that dark red. And then as you hit the space bar on your keyboard, it will automatically pick colors that complement the colors that you have locked. If you don't know what color you want, you just keep hitting that space bar and it will randomize them for you and always complementing each other. Uh, but at some point you're gonna say, I like this one. Um, you can also bring up shades. Um, you can also see that the hexadecimal color is there so that if you're using Photoshop or Illustrator or another design tool, that helps you to punch in that code and um, allow you to take advantage of that as well. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, you can save that. And at the top of the screen, you also have the ability to come in and uh, use the glasses and that will allow you to um, check to see if it, the color falls into one of the color blindness areas. So if the color isn't accessible, um, it will tell you that and suggest an alternate color or show you if a person has that challenge, what they would actually see. So if you have some text on screen that looks like that, that could be a potential challenge. So I'm going to adjust my screen. Uh, so we're going to bring up desktop four. You're going to see my messy desktop. I'm going to turn off my video. Or I'm going to switch my video over to the face cam. There you go. I'm going to remove my green screen so you can see the back office. And I'm going to go into full presentation mode here. Oops, wrong button. And I'm gonna pull this out. So you guys should now be able to see my screen, share screen, desktop for, just gonna bring this up, play, move this over, and here we go. Okay. So um, this next app, sorry about that, just rearranging some stuff. This next app is a free website called Remove BG for backgrounds. And what it basically allows you to do is upload a graphic to the site. So here I'm uploading a graphic and you can see that it will automatically remove my desk pattern from the graphic. So at the beginning there, we had a, you saw the desk, it was a wood panel next to the keyboard. And after it does its thing, it automatically removes this. In the old days, you'd have to bring this graphic into Photoshop or another tool um, like that, where you'd have to manually select and go around it. And now it's possible to uh, magically just upload a graphic and it will remove it for you. Another really cool tool is called autodraw.com. This is actually brought to you from Google. And what it allows you to do is start to sketch with your finger or a pencil or your mouse, whatever device you might be using. And what it allows you to do is select from the top of the screen um, the different things that it thinks you're drawing. So here I'm drawing an airplane. And as I get closer to an airplane, you'll notice different images that match that, kind of like an emoji. And uh, so here I'm drawing a cloud. And what's great about this is that you may not be the best illustrator, but you can quickly select from the different images that are available based on what you're drawing. So here I'm attempting to draw a car 
And then you can save that as an SVG file so you can bring that uh, into PowerPoint or whatever other tool. So if you wanna level up your drawing skills or just learn how to be a better illustrator, it can also help for that because it can inspire you on different ways that you can create content there. Another really cool tool, this one blows my mind, is called clipdrop.co. And um, what this one does is it allows you to use your camera on your phone again. And um, what it does is it allows you to extract an object from that. So here we see an iPad on my desk. And when I click the button, it grabs that image and pulls it out automatically, similar to that removed background, but it's live. Um, so if I look to my other part of my desk, I see a water bottle. And when I click, it automatically grabs that water bottle. And what's great is that if I'm in my home office, I'm able to connect uh, my phone uh, wirelessly, you know, through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to my computer, and it will automatically send it to an app on my uh, computer, so I don't have to do any manual changing. It just magically appears, and I'm able to grab it and drop it wherever I want to drop it. Um, so I'm able to focus on being creative rather than, wow, it'd be great to have a water bottle on this presentation or this learning module that we're creating. How do we do that? Another really cool tool that's out there is called cleanup.pictures. So you'll notice that uh, a lot of the dot coms are gone. So a lot of these sites use different endings. So this one's cleanup.pictures. And basically you can see on the right-hand side there, they're highlighting the protractor and the ruler. And as they do that or the pencil, it's removing it. So if we wanted to try that with that image that we started with, I wanna remove that wire from the post-it note. You see that I can just use my mouse, highlight it, and it again, magically removes it. Again, this is possible to do in a tool like Photoshop, but it just takes a little bit longer and costs more money. And they're working on some really cool ways to take advantage of AI, um, but they're not all there yet. So these are some of the tools that let you jump onto that today. And this is free, which is um, great. So if you need a quick cleanup, um, you can take advantage of that. Now, what's even cooler, if you're on a Mac-based uh, computer, um, the Mac now has the ability when you right-click on a graphic, you go to quick actions and you select remove background. That's my son, uh, Adam. And you notice that there's the before image in our busy kitchen and there's the after image. You see the alpha channel is nice and smooth. And again, just by selecting that one command, it allows you to bring that in and jump. So this is just showing it in a large version and that's in the, the deck as well as in the resource guide. So it teaches you how to do it. Um, so if you have a Mac, you can take advantage of that today and don't have to do anything other than right click. Um, uh, something else that's really cool is in iOS 16, which is available for free for any iPhone users, um, you have the ability um, to select a image. So here we see Adam and his friend Chris at a Phillies game um, who are now in the World Series. Um, and what happens is if I touch the screen and I hold, it allows you to extract an object. So it's kind of taking advantage of the technology like ClipDrop, but it's built into the OS. So here I opened up email and I dropped it in and I've got them nice and clean. So you can guess they were at a Phillies game or I can put a different background in there um, or I can just extract that so the family focuses on the kids. Um, so very helpful, very useful. And that's just done with your phone, which is pretty amazing. What's also really cool is that Microsoft, uh, Google and Apple have been working on improving that use of that camera on your device. So here, if I snap a picture of my screen or I do a screen grab, I can highlight any text within that graphic and I can extract it just by copying and pasting. So in the old days, I'd have to use OCR or I would actually have to type it in. And today you're able just to select it and copy it instantly uh, on a Mac or iOS 16, um, which is awesome. Um, if you had a phone number or a web link, you can just touch it and it will automatically call if you say it's okay or it will allow you to open it up in your web browser. So it makes it um, so easy. The other thing that's really exciting with the apps of the future and creativity is that there are several um, AI-based, artificial intelligence-based creative tools that allow you to start to create artwork from your words. So the one of the most popular ones is Dolly, and I remember it through the movie Wally. -E. <laughs> um, but basically what it allows you to do is uh, type in a phrase, um, and it will generate an image from that. So if you said, I want to see two bears with two old computers on the moon, it will create that for you. And every time you hit create, it will generate a unique image, uh, which to me is still mind boggling. 
So one of the cool apps that is available for the Mac, um, this is the first time that I've seen an app that you can actually download. Most of these tools are web-based and the data goes to them. Um, so there's a free program called diffusionb.com. Uh, and if you go there, you can download it on your Mac. It has to be one of the newer Macs, an M1 or M2. And it does the same thing, but what's cool is that all the data is on your computer and nothing is shared with the outside world. So here I said, let's see an image of a monkey riding a bike in the park, and it generated that image for us. Um, so really cool, you can start to play. Um, Danny also shared that Canva has this technology built in. I know that um, Adobe is also working on it from their Adobe Creative Max earlier uh, last month. They had shown several different examples of things you're gonna be able to do. And Microsoft also has in their latest version of Office, you have the ability now in PowerPoint to say, I would like a background of space and it will automatically pull that image in, uh, which lets you focus on, again, adding your content rather than searching for images or buying an image or licensing an image or going to shoot an image. Um, collaboration is another great way that you have the ability today um, to work with other stakeholders. Uh, or teammates. And we've all used Google Docs or Microsoft Office, and they allow you to type or work on a spreadsheet or work in a slideshow together. Um, one of my favorite tools today is a program called Miro. And I'd love to see in the chat if you used that before, just sharing that, um, because I've been using it for about two and a half years. And it's probably the one app that I use every day besides email. Um, because it allows me to instantly invite a group of people into a meeting and we could be typing or sharing or adding information into the product. Um, there is another product also called Mural um, and several other ones as well. Um, what I love about Miro is that it focuses on creativity. So here you see an example of 50 people and you see all their little names are there with the little colored blocks. I like to think of them as busy bees. So as you're facilitating a meeting or brainstorming, it can be two people or it could be a hundred people. And what's great is that you license the product for about a hundred dollars a year. And then everyone else can come in for free as a participant. And they have the ability, you see them here adding notes or adding information. They can also draw on the screen. And this is an infinite canvas. So you can just keep spreading out and adding more content. What's great is that there are hundreds of different templates available. So if you need to do like a meeting reflection or a project reflection, or you're doing a kickoff, there are all these different things built in. There's also the built the ability to use audio and video conferencing right inside the software, uh, which most of us don't do because we have Teams or Zoom or whatever platform you're using. But here you can see some of the functionality where you can actually add videos, documents. And what's nice is that if you have a Word doc or a PDF, you can explode that document, not physically explode it, but you can expand it so that you can see every page. And that's really helpful when you're focusing on instructional design because you're analyzing and looking at all the information that's been shared with you. And you have the ability then to um, document, to note, or to reference it when you're working with your different teammates. Um, here's an example of a project that uh, we used in Miro where we're showing the different phases of design thinking. And what we did is as we expanded this program over the last couple of years, we continue to update this board to show how the product has changed or evolved. And it also helps to inspire us. So if we're like, what did we do two years ago when we launched this new tool and how has it changed? So it allows students to come in and to learn about critical thinking and to document and learn how to write better. So kids start to use this in kindergarten uh, and they write, you know, simple, you know, couple words and they start to write sentences and then paragraphs and then writing essays. And what's cool is that we have about 2 million kids using it per year now and the sixth graders are writing at a high school level. Um, because they're learning this technique and they're becoming better at their thinking skills because they're going through a defined process, um, which is exciting. One of the other really cool things about Miro is that if you have a phone or a tablet, you can do what's called a stickies capture. And what this allows you to do is basically point. So behind me, you can see my sticky board. And when I snap a picture of it, it will extract all the sticky notes and it will allow us to put it into the Miro board. But what's great is that all the text has been OCR'd, which means that I can edit it and or change it. So anyone that's in that meeting or in that group can grab a sticky, move it around, edit it or change it. You can see me bringing it up on my iPad and utilizing that. So it just 
offers total flexibility and again, lets you focus on being creative. And that's one of the criteria that I look at when I'm building out something or looking for something. Um, you know, how can it help our workflow and help us to be better? Um, so here's an example from DevLearn. And uh, this was a creative board where we had about 50 to 75 people participating. And the idea was we had some key topics. And then as we zoom in, everyone could be working together or they could like say, hey, you all have five minutes and I want you to add your favorite tool. Have you played with AR, VR? Have you played with content tools or have you have found any good books or have you focused on UX? So you can see that the board can be really simple like we saw earlier, or it can be super creative with backgrounds and images and you know your imagination is your only limitation. And that link will actually work so you can actually zoom into this board and play around and look at a, a great example as well as find some other tools that you might be interested in. Now we were focusing on Miro.com. There are several other platforms. Some of you have shared it inside the chat. Uh, Mural.co is another powerful one. It has some super powerful tools specifically for, I found, facilitating. So if you do a lot of meetings where you want to guide your participants through a certain uh, area or flow, it works really well for that. Um, there's another product called Lucid Spark, Envision Freehand, uh, Figma Jam or Fig Jam, and Adobe just bought the Figma family. Um, so that's going to become part of the Creative Cloud, which is great. And if you're in education or you're looking for a way to work with your kids, uh, Google has a free product called Jamboard. It doesn't do all of the functionality of these other tools, but it's a great way to get started. And what I love um, seeing with my kids as well is that in school, they're starting to apply these different processes, uh, which is really exciting. Another really cool thing um, that we see is the... Uh, newer functionality in these next generation of tools. So Miro, I think of uh, as a future tool um, where I want other tools to borrow and or steal some of the functionality. So here you see some examples of my cursor moving around. And one of the really cool features in FigJam is that you can type a message next to your cursor. So if you're talking to 25 people at the same time, you can have everyone, you tell them how to do that. So rather than looking at chat, which is disconnected or over there, it's in the context of what you're doing or talking about. So I've found that it's much more helpful to keep the conversation focused and flowing rather than let me look at my chat window, where were we and how do we get there? You also notice some of the things like the emojis and um, other functionality where you can um, you know, pop up or show other things. And we see that in Teams now as well as Zoom, but it's disconnected. It's not in the primary window. And I want everyone to adopt that. So we push for that. <laughs> um, some other collaborative tools that are out there is figma.com. And this is one that's specifically focused on UX. So whenever we're designing learning, we use this as a team. And here you see myself, um, Sophia and Ian working on a design for a product that helps high school students learn about stopping bleeding. Uh, if they were in an emergency situation. So each of us was working on a different area of the content. And what's great is that I don't have to stop and share the document or send it to you or tell you where to upload it. Because it's a cloud-based application, everyone knows this project is at this link. And when they click on it, they can see the latest content and or um, you know, link to or jump to that area. Or I could be like, hey, can you help me figure out or find an image or help me with this copy? Um, I don't have to send a file. I just send the link and you're able to jump in and participate with me. Um, so it makes it really easier to focus on, again, being creative or that particular task that you're trying to achieve. <clears throat> Switching gears, another re really great app that's out there is called typeform.com. And you may have used Google Forms or SurveyMonkey or Microsoft uh, Forms. There's hundreds of these tools. What I love about Typeform is that it has a great interface, but what's also great about it is that you're able to embed your form within your learning project. So most of the time we send an email saying, hey, um, you know, please fill out the survey and some people do it or don't do it or you know, we don't even see it. What's cool about Typeform is that I can embed the form inside the learning. So I can bring it up as a standard object. I can bring it up as a full page overtake, a pop-up, a pop over, which means it slides over, um, or a side tab. They even have a chat-based um, bot now. So what's great about this is it will ask you these questions and all the data, just like the other tools, goes into a spreadsheet in the cloud. 
and you can get emailed a copy. But what's great about this is that you have a higher chance of your users, your learners participating because they see it in the context of the learning rather than two weeks later, they get an email saying, thanks for taking our course. Here's a link, please fill it out. And again, the, the percentage of people that will do it is much smaller. Whereas if you hit them in the middle of the course or at the end of the course, maybe you're doing a temperature reading of, you know, are you getting it? Do you like it? What do you, you know, how can we improve it? What can we do to make it better for you? So that's one of the reasons I love Typeform. Um, there is a free account, but to utilize it with, you know, a couple hundred users uh, or thousands of users, uh, it's a paid paste product based on the number of forms or users that are filling it out each month. They also have a really cool app called Video Ask. And what this app does is ask questions through video. So you can be on screen or your talent can be on screen and the users can choose to record audio or record video. And that comes back to you through this platform. And in the old days, we would build tools like this that would cost thousands of dollars. But now I'm able to do this by myself as a learning architect or project manager. I just fill out a simple form and I can share this with you. And I can be like, tell me about your favorite project that you've done. Um, tell me about the biggest challenge that you've had this month, whatever it might be. But you're able then to type in an answer or you can do that audio and video based recording, which again, just makes it more personable and getting people comfortable with you know, communicating through those different tools. Another really cool app that's out there is Zapier.com. And this is a web-based platform that is used for what is called APIs, Application Programming Interfaces. So if you wanna connect different tools together, let's say when someone fills out a form, you wanna automatically share in Microsoft Teams that someone's done that. You can use Zapier to automate that. You can also have a light turn on, and or an email sent to you um, and a file downloaded to your computer all instantly. Um, so you can set up these workflows that are automated and do complex tasks without having to go, I need to go back to type form. I need to log in. I need to you know, find the form. I need to download it. I need to then copy and paste it and share it with Claire or anyone else on our team. And that you know, just adds more complexity. So if you're looking for automation, you wanna check out a tool like Zapier. Another really cool app if you're on iOS is that your iPhone has the ability to record on the front camera as well as the back camera. And there is a great app called Double Take and it allows you to record on both cameras at the same time. You're like, why would I do that? <laughs> um, why you would do that is that if you happen to be you know, skiing down a, a mountain, you can be recording yourself, your face, as well as what's happening in front of you. But more handily is um, here's an example of I Justine, who's a popular YouTuber talking about technology. And here she's at a conference talking with her sister. But in the old days, we'd have to have two cameras set up to record both of them. But today she's able to hold up, hold up her iPhone and it records her as well as her sister in this case. And they're able to have a conversation without all this gear. So you can download Double Take for free on an iPhone and take advantage of that. I believe it has to be an iPhone 12 or higher um, in order to do that, um, which is great. All right. Uh, another really great app is Adobe Capture. This one's free and it brings it back down to earth. And what it allows you to do is point your camera to uh, anything and it will pull the colors. So here I'm, I'm pointing at a toy and notice it pulls the colors from that toy and you see the color palette across the top of the screen. I can save that if I'm in Creative Cloud, I can open that up in Photoshop or Illustrator. What's also really cool is that there are, you know, I can point it at a flower and pull those colors. I can save those palettes, which is great. There's also tools to do font recognition. So not OCR, but it will actually tell you what the font is. Um, so if I point at the Apple website as an example, it tells me about that text. And then I can scroll up and down the list to see if I have that font or where I can get that font. Now, if you're an Adobe Creative member, or if you go to fonts.google.com, there are hundreds of fonts that are available to you as an Adobe user um, or from Google for free. Um, so you can a lot of times find fonts that are very similar or close to that. And those two different tools, fonts.adobe.com or fonts.google.com will help you match those different elements together. Another really cool app that's out there is called bscript.com. This is a web-based app 
And what this app will do is it will allow you to record audio or upload an audio file. You'll notice that the transcript is here, but you'll also notice that there are four people in this meeting. What's great is that just like Miro or a Google Doc or a Microsoft Office Doc, is that you can have multiple people working on the same document at the same time, but you're working with audio. And what's great is that if I highlight a word and hit delete on my keyboard, it automatically updates the audio wave. So I don't have to go in manually editing anymore. I'm able to do it through the text transcription, which is pretty amazing. You may have also heard of deep fakes where they're using computer technology to uh, say things that a person never said. Um, this tool will allow you to do it with your own voice. So here we see an example where um, we're talking about, I should probably get a haircut this year. Uh, hopefully you get more I than one. I should probably get a haircut this hear year. Hear that audio. But if I edit that copy, um, I can actually go in and say, I should probably go bowling this year and it will automatically generate new audio for me. The fear about this is that I could get Tom Cruise's voice and have him say how much he loves my learning products. Um, so that's not legit, you can't do that. But this product called Overdub within Descript will allow you to do it with your own voice. So pretty cool. And that this product nice. um, you can play around with for free. Um, but it ranges from $12 to several dollars per month uh, based on the amount of audio that you want to be able to edit and work with. Another really cool app that's out there is the Adobe Character Animator. And if you're working uh, with the Creative Cloud, you already have this tool for free. So here you see me on screen. And as I move around on the screen, you see the animated character moving with me. As I move my eyes or my mouth, the character is mimicking me. And you know, five years ago, this technology was only available at you know super studios like in Hollywood or when you're making a movie or a game. Now you're able to do this on your desktop or your laptop with your built-in camera, and you can either create your own character or you can use one of the Adobe characters. And as you move yourself around, it will animate that character and record your voice um, to have an animated character. So really cool, really helpful when you need to do something a little bit more. Uh, special for a learning program. Another really good app that's out there is called Explain Everything, and you can learn at it, about it at explaineverything.com. This one works on a um, phone or a tablet. It's not desktop-based. And here you see an example where you can bring up a web browser and you can move your fingers around and animate that object anywhere on screen. You can hit record at the bottom of the screen, and then you can grab the pencil tool and you can start annotating. So in this example, we're highlighting things that we like or don't like, or giving feedback back to our team so they can make the learning content better. If I'm, you know, if I move my phone into a landscape mode, you can also work on it, but this is really optimized for a tablet where you can start to work. So because it's web-based or there's a web browser mode, you're able to bring up any um, learning module that you've created and then annotate it. So you can also do this through a tool like Snagit, or a built-in screensaver. Um, but I love this because it records my audio and or my video and lets me annotate it at the same time. So this was another example at a ATD conference where they had some really cool lights and headsets. So I was just sharing with my team what I noticed and you know, giving them an opportunity to learn about it. When you expand it, so this is using Explain Everything app on my tablet, you can see the audio as well as the annotations that were added. So you can actually edit them or remove them or turn them off. So you have full control um, of what you've created. Um, really cool. So here's me uh, with my ceiling above me and uh, my the tablets on my lap. So I'm just highlighting that I would love to get rid of that light because it builds a weird glow. <laughs> Um, so if we were looking at creating experiences, the ideal here is that when you're starting to imagine your next learning project, you might do some sketches, you might get some feedback, you might start to build a prototype, and then you're going to design it and then develop it. One of the things that we have to learn about today is that there are all these devices that users have access to. Everything from a watch to a phone, to a tablet, to a computer, to a computer that turns into a tablet or pulls apart or has a touch screen. And then we've got big screens as well. And now we're also getting into the metaverse more and more. So you have all these other devices um, like headsets and motion capture, and hopefully soon building, being able to create a hologram based system. Um, so your job is to learn about these technologies, not get too crazy, 
or dreaming you know too far where it's outside of your budget or your timeline so you've got to remember to keep things simple as well um, one of the other ways that we use a tool like uh, figma or adobe xd or Miro or Mural is that we'll create these boards when we're starting a project for inspiration. So this project example was helping um, younger teenagers learn about different things from the American Red Cross. And we were pulling some ads, some artwork and some things that might resonate with them. And the idea was to create this board to help inspire the team or help them learn about it. And then you're able to look at that for inspiration. The other thing that's really cool to remember is that you've got your phone and you might take a picture of something that you like or don't like, or that you might want to explain to a teammate. So one of the things that I do with my team is that I'll talk about something that you don't like. So what is bad uh, or not optimal? And then what is good? So in this example, I was helping my dad fix a toilet and uh, I studied engineering in school. So I think I'm pretty capable. I should be able to do this. And this was taken a couple of years ago. So the instructions unfolded to a, you know, two feet wide by about four feet high. And it just freaked me out. And I was like, yeah, dad, we're gonna have to call someone. I don't know where to start here. And, you know, today you have QR codes and you've got videos. So it makes it a little bit easier, but I took a picture of it to remind me never to create anything like this. That wasn't optimal. That didn't make someone feel comfortable and help them go through the process. Um, an example of a good design, um, here's an example where a learner actually reads, like reading is okay, it's good for them. Um, and then Kathleen on the side there is the author of this content. So rather than having her read or restate what's already on the screen, she takes you deeper into the content and she helps to explain and provide some examples of why you would want to develop a concept or write something with visuals to help pull their reader into the content. So rather than just repeating what's there, um, it allows a learner to dive deeper. So using audio or video to expand that learning journey. Um, so you want something you want to think about. Now, Adobe and Figma are great tools to use. You can actually download Adobe XD for free or set up a Figma free account um, to start to draw and animate and work with different content. We saw this example earlier where you can have multiple people working out at the same time. Another great tool is um, the Google Chrome browser. If you go under the third menu and you select developer tools or dev tools, you have the ability to do an audit for accessibility, mobile compatibility, or speed. You can also slow your network down. So we most of us have faster networks, uh, but if we're working with learners that are out in the field, maybe they're using phones, you might create a 30 minute video and then they're going to cry or they're going to complain that they're not able to access it. So using dev tools and accessing it through the Google Chrome browser, you can slow your speed down to simulate that and understand that it takes time. On the left hand side of the screen, we see an example of a series of tools from a website called a11yproject.com. And this is a great URL if you need to focus or learn more about accessibility. This is a great site to go to for learning. They have plugins for both Figma and Adobe XD, which allow you to check for AA and AAA compatibility. So it will check color and contrast to make sure that your content is readable um, or accessible to your learners. Um, and most of these are available for free. So a couple other tools that are out there for collaborating, you may have OneNote, you may not use it in a while. What I love about Microsoft's OneNote, which is available for free, is that it works on Mac, Windows, as well as iOS and Android. So we could create a document and share it. And what's great about that is that I can add a photo, you could add a video, I could write some copy, you might add another tool. And then we have a space to go to where it automatically syncs to all our devices and allows us to um, work together to document or um, add notes about different information, um, which is really cool. Another great app that's out there is Nebo, um, which allows you to do automatic um, handwriting transcription. So we'll convert your handwriting into text. Um, there are several other apps that do it, including iOS and the Microsoft Surface line. Um, what I love about these tools, again, is that they're synced through the cloud. So here you see an example of one of the keynotes that I attended at a recent event. And if I open it up my phone, my desktop or my computer, it's the same data and I'm able to see the pictures along with my scribbling and or any other notes that I've added. So if I edit it on one device, it's automatically on all the other devices. And that's available to you for free 
um, which is really cool and amazing. Another great tool that I want to share with you, um, there is a great app called the M app, M-M-H-M-M dot app. This will work on Windows and or your Mac. And what it allows you to do is use your built-in camera and then be able to resize yourself. So if you wanna to present to a group of people and you don't wanna just do slides, this allows you to put yourself inside the content or working with it. It also allows you to respond to hand movements. So here I've got a, a green screen and you notice when I move my hand, it automatically swaps out to a phone and or the big spongy hand, um, which is really cool and useful. If you have an opportunity, if you're still working at home, haven't gotten back into an office, um, you have the ability, uh, and I see uh, Jamie has a problem with this, and we'll come back to that in a second, um, to add a second screen. So by adding a second screen to your computer, it allows you to expand. This is one of the best ways that you can become more focused or optimized, because it's just like having a bigger desk or more space in your room, um, but it's done with screens. So if you have the ability to have two screens, that's also great. Um, here is my current workstation <laughs> that I'm sitting in front of today. I've got about six screens and that allows me to turn things on and off and move between them. But I found that I'm able to have email on one and my deck or my learning that I'm developing on one and then my Slack or Teams on the other, my calendar on one. So I'm able to look at whatever screen I need to. And then rather than shuffling things, um, what's great is that Screens are very inexpensive today. Um, you can get a monitor for as little as $150 and it will expand depending on the functionality and features that you want. <laughs> um, another really cool tool that's out there. And again, my job here is to help get you motivated and thinking about there's all these cool things I can take advantage of and they're free. Um, some of them cost something like the Elgato Stream Deck. And this is a great device that allows you to create a series of buttons. So rather than looking for a function or remembering what keyboard combination to hit, you're able to define a series of keys and it comes in different sizes. And you hear it's a software. So as I move my mouse around, I can jump in and basically set up all my macros. So I have a, um, a button that will turn my Zoom camera on or off. It will end a meeting. It will turn my mic on or off. It will compress the graphic and add it to a Slack channel. So it, it's really limitless and it just allows you again to work on different processes or workflows and optimize what you're doing. They also have a Stream Deck pedal. If you wanna like hide it and or just use your foot, you can have three buttons there or three foot clicks, um, which again is nice if you wanna be able to turn your camera on or turn your lights off as well. One other really cool app that's out there is Otter AI. And what this app does is it allows you to transcribe the content of a meeting. It's available for free on a mobile device as well as your computer for up to 600 minutes a month. But if you buy it, it runs about $100 a year. It will also transcribe and identify who's who. So you can see it recognizes my voice and it puts what I'm saying right there. I can share this meeting with someone. And if I do a search, I can be like, hey, who said this? at our meeting last week, it will take me back to that transcript. The key here is that you have to have permission to record everyone. So everyone has to acknowledge that you're recording and they hit I agree um, so that, you know, it's, a, it's illegal to do it without telling someone. Another really cool tool that's out there is called loom.com. And this one allows you to quickly turn your camera on and or just use your voice and annotate whatever's on your screen. So if you wanna share what your current project looks like, or you wanna ask a teammate a question, or you wanna answer a question, rather than going through several tools, you're able to launch Loom on your desktop or through the browser, and then hit the button to record, and then it automatically saves back to the Loom website where you can share a link with one person or a whole team or with anyone in the world. And what's great is that it's all automated. So I don't have to worry about where does that file go? How do I get it to this group? Um, you just add the attendees or add the information and it makes it a lot easier to interact. Um, one other thing that I want to mention really quick is this ideal of using mixed reality or augmented reality. And there's some really cool tools that are out there like Google Translate. We've all used Google Translate to type in a phrase and translate it, but you can also use the camera. So here is an example where you can point the camera at your computer screen and you can translate from English to, in this case, Spanish or the other way around. 
So we've got kids in schools today, they all have these phones and they're able, they might be, you know, natively they speak uh, Spanish. Um, so they're able to translate on the fly and be able to interact or communicate with their teacher um, because the software may not support it, but it's just so cool to see how that works. There are several programs on the market like Zapworks or Adobe Arrow, which allow you to do it. But the really exciting thing is when you start to mix these technologies together. So if I was working with a group of kids, um, let's say they are in the middle of the country and they've never seen an ocean or never been to an aquarium. And in the old days, we would read a book about a whale, we might watch a video and we learn more about whales. But imagining giving all of them a pair of glasses inside their gym and they can actually see a whale uh, inside their gymnasium at actual size. So they can actually experience or better understand that a whale is really big and you know it's the size of a house. Um, so I can't wait for this to happen because it's just so exciting. <laughs> um, That's very exciting. Um, I was wondering, Nick, if you uh, might have a couple minutes to take some questions before we sure. kind of wrap up. Yep. If there's any last couple things you wanted to add. Yeah, there's, there's one last note and then we'll transition to questions. And I know we've only got a couple minutes left, but um, taking okay. cues from everything. So one of the things the way I learn is thinking about, you know, what I see, what I hear, what did I feel? And did I learn anything? So whether it's playing with a little one, going to a ball game, you know, interacting with a group of people, but just thinking about those four things and how you can apply it. So here's an example from the Franklin Institute where they were teaching about design thinking. That's Paris in the corner. And what's great about this is that she's using the same technique that we use every day in learning, but she was trying to figure out how to avoid the alligator in this you know, supposed problem in the backyard. Um, so with that, I wanna encourage you to keep it simple. I want you to also think about how you can use these different tools to make a difference. I threw a lot of things at you and there's a lot more resources in the guide and we can open it up to some questions. Um, the link is also in the corner of the screen. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat. And yes, we will be sending out a recording of this as well as the um, resources to everyone who registered. Um, so Karen asked about, uh, do I have a criteria for vetting apps? And um, I'm going to classify myself as a geek. Someone called me a nerd last week, which I'm okay with. <laughs> and uh, uh, basically, I'll look at anything. So any tool that is forward thinking and provides a service, um, I will go through a quick check. And my team is constantly asking me another tool. We're switching again. Uh, but I'm always looking for any way that we can be better, smarter, you know, focusing on creating learning rather than doing it the old way that might have taken four hours or creates a problem. Um, um, so yeah, the, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask, you know, add them in there. I shared the link again. Um, uh, someone, Jamie had asked about writing. When you're handwriting, uh, what happens when it translates? Uh, I have really bad writing and I ha I've had great luck with the Apple um, iOS uh, 15 and 16 now. Um, but if you have a Surface tablet, it works really well. But I would just look at the tool that you might be using and just experimenting and seeing if there's one that works. The other thing that's really cool is um, within Microsoft Windows, as well as Apple's Mac OS and iOS, as well as Google Chrome and Chrome devices, um, you have the ability to dictate. And the technology has got, come so far in the last 10 years, where today I can start to talk and you'll see your words just appearing on screen. PowerPoint does a really good job of this too. If you want to instantly translate um, your, what you're saying so that if someone can't hear you, they can actually read it on screen. I think Claire, you're using another technology today for closed captioning as well. Um, so it's really good things. So um, I think I don't see any other questions in there, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Claire. You can also reach me on Twitter or at email nick at .com. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Nick. That's um, fantastic. I really appreciate, you know, you sharing all that with us. And um, that's just some great information. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here one more time. Uh, there's a contact information uh, for me as well. So yeah, if you have any other questions, please go ahead and reach out to me. Um, any questions about the program, uh, the, you know, e-learning program, um, I'd be happy to answer and any questions about Nick's presentation, I'm sure um, I can pass along to him. So yeah, thank you all so much for uh, being here. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day.
Thanks so much. Bye-bye.